when I do career videos, um, I, I think to myself, all right, so what career can I look at? And we can kind of find a, a comparable, comparable in today's game. I want to talk about Yari Curry because we talk a lot about Leon Dreisaitl. Leon Dreisaitl, who ideally should be a center, but he's played on the wing. He's played with McDavid a lot. And people look and go, hey, Dreisaitl's good, but he's good because of McDavid. Without McDavid, you know what? Yari Curry back in the 80s, the same thing could have been said. I didn't hear it often, but it could have been said. Uh, Yari Curry, known as the Finnish Flash when he played. Uh, Gretzky assisted on 364 of the 601 goals scored by Yari Curry. So either Curry's really good at finishing it off, or Gretzky just threw it to where he knew he was going to be, and Gretzky gets the credit. So again, it depends on how you see it. You can look and go, I give the goal scorer the credit, or hey, he got more than half of his goals from one guy. So maybe he was overrated. And again, you can make that argument. And yet... He was named to one of the 100 greatest NHLers of all time. There wasn't a whole lot of argument about that. Uh, and, and you really can't argue with the numbers. 1980-81, he makes his debut in the NHL. He'd already played a bit in Europe. So he didn't come in as like a fresh-faced 18-year-old rookie. I believe he's 20 when he, when he, <clears throat> 20 when he made his debut. <clears throat> 75 games played that year, 32 goals, 43 assists, 75 points. So... Point a game right out of the gate and playing for a very solid young Edmonton Oilers team. 81-82, play 71 games, 32 goals, 54 assists, 86 points. And again, the goals are there, the points are there. Overall, uh, very well-rounded player. The sniper would come out as the years went along. 82-83, 80 games played, 45 goals, 59 assists, 104 points. 83 is the year that the Oilers go to the finals. In that Stanley Cup final... <clears throat> the New York Islanders shut him down quick. Like, okay, you guys got here. You're freewheeling, offensive style, but we are the gatekeepers. <clears throat> you have to get through us, and you're not getting through us this year. So they didn't. 83-84, they won a Stanley Cup. Play 64 games in the regular season, and this is where the sniper shows up. 52 goals, 61 assists, 113 points. And he became a star in those playoffs. And we'll get to the playoffs after. I want to discuss the playoffs separately. 84, 85, 73 games played, 71 goals, 64 assists, 135 points. That was a record for right wingers until Brett Hull came along, scored 72, and then he'd score 86. So uh, Curry's record didn't last very long, but 71 goals, pretty impressive, no matter what area you're in. 85, 86, 78 games played, 68 goals, 63 assists, 131 points. And of course, in 86, they were upset by the uh, Calgary Flames. And that was the famous Steve Smith situation, which Curry didn't have anything to do with, but the Oilers don't win a Stanley Cup for that third straight year. 86-87, he becomes part of a dynasty. 79 games played, 54 goals, 54 assists, 108 points. They won their third cup in four years. It's three cups in four years to become officially a dynasty. 87-88, 80 games played, 43 goals, 53 assists, 96 points. And that's the fourth Stanley Cup in five years. And I was getting kind of nauseating for non-Oiler fans at this point. Just throwing that out there. 88-89, uh, the year after Gretzky leaves. 76 games played, 44 goals, 58 assists, 102 points. So without Wayne, he actually scores one extra goal and he still scores 100 points. So that's where, at this point in his season, you can go, you know what? Yari Curry's a good player all by himself. 89-90, 78 games played, 33 goals, 60 assists, 93 points. The end of 1990, his career or his career changes. His time with the Oilers comes to an end because his contract comes to an end. And he's like, I'm not signing with the Oilers. Not sticking around. Uh, after the 1990 Stanley Cup, it's pretty clear that the Oilers are still going to be cheap and they're still not going to be keeping guys around. He's already seen Coffee go. He's already seen Gretzky go. He sees the writing on the wall. He he wants to play um, and he... he he likely at this point felt that Edmonton just wasn't where he wanted to stay. So, he went to Italy for a year. Signed with Milan. Played well. Signed with Milan. And stayed there for the whole year. Well, the Oilers are like, fine, you stay over there. Uh, the Oilers then traded his rights on May 30th, 30th of 1991 to Philadelphia. That same day, his rights are then traded to the Kings. So, Philadelphia wasn't going to play there. They trade him to the Kings where he can be reunited with Wayne. Wayne Gretzky. This is going to be great. 
They're going to recreate their chemistry on the same line, and they, they didn't. Not really. 73 games played, 23 goals, 37 assists, 60 points. Maybe it's from playing a year in Milan that he wasn't quite his old self. Maybe it's that he's older. This is something that you have to look at, too. You can look at numbers of these guys as they get older and just say, well, yeah, they got older. As players hit their 30s, they're generally less productive than they are in their 20s, historically. Uh, 92, 93, 82 games played, 27 goals, but he gets 60 assists, so he gets 87 points. So Yari Curry at this stage kind of reinvents himself that season as a setup man, not just the the, the goal scorer um, and career. His assist numbers are pretty strong. 93, 94, plays 81 games, 31 goals, 46 assists, 77 points. But by this by this stage, the, the Gretzky experiment is kind of wearing down. It's kind of losing its luster. And 94-95, lockout shortened season, 38 games played, 10 goals, 19 assists, 29 points. 93, when he got the 87 points, that team went to the Stanley Cup Final. But 94 showed, yeah, that was nice, but they're not really a contending team. By the end of 95, uh, that 10 goals and 38 games, again, it's a lockout shortened schedule, but it stands out that his goal scoring is not what it was, and it's kind of gone. 95-96, plays 57 games with the Kings, 17 goals, 23 assists, 40 points. The New York Rangers come a-calling. Um, and this is one of the three or four times that the New York Rangers would do this, where it's like, okay, we've got to bulk things up so they, they look to former Oilers at the deadline. He plays 14 games with the Rangers as a rental, 14 games, one goal, four assists, five points in those games. And they go out, uh, they, they, they don't end up, you know, achieving great success with Curry. So Curry goes as a UFA, and he signs with the Ducks. Uh, 82 games played with the Ducks, 13 goals, 22 assists, 35 points. His career as a scorer is basically done at that stage. Um, the hope was that with the Ducks, it would, you know, at least get back to 20 goal, 25 goal level. It didn't. Uh, he ends up going to Colorado for his final season, plays 70 games. Five goals, 17 assists, 22 points. He did play in the All-Star game in 98, but his goal scoring had left him at that stage. Five goals in 70 games that year. Told everybody, yeah, this is it. Ends up playing a grand total of 1,251 games, 601 goals, 797 assists, 1,398 points. So sadly, not quite 800 assists, not quite 1,400 points, but close. In the playoffs, he played a total of 200 games, got 106 goals, 127 assists, for a total of 233 points. So I've gone over all this, but he did score 19 goals in 1985, which tied Reggie Leach's record for goals in the playoffs, which still stands. As close as Burry got in 94, that 19-goal record still stands. And he had three hat tricks against the Chicago Blackhawks in the playoffs that year. That's a record as well. Nobody had ever scored three hat tricks in one series. So Yari Curry, really a sniper when it came to playoff time, especially in years they won Stanley Cups. He's a first-team All-Star in 1985 and 1987. He's a second-team All-Star in 84, 86, and 89. So five times he's on the NHL's All-Star team at the end of the year, uh, either first or second team, which tells you he was pretty darn good at his position. He His number 17 is retired by the Oilers in 2001, the same year he ends up in the Hockey Hall of Fame. In Stanley Cup wins, he was pretty dominant. And again, you can look at it and you can go, well, yeah, but look how many points Gretzky scored in the playoffs. Look how many of these goals were assisted by 99. Or you can look and say, he was just pretty darn good at it. 106 career goals. A lot of them came during those four, those five Stanley Cup wins, I should say. Uh, he led the playoffs in scoring, goal scoring, that is, four times. Not points, because yeah, Gretzky had that locked down. Uh, in 84, Stanley Cup win, he played 19 games, 14 goals, 14 assists, 28 points. Again, leads the league in scoring in the playoffs for goals. 85, plays 18 games. Yeah, the Oilers didn't waste any time when they won those Cups. Um, 19 goals, 12 assists, 31 points. Uh, 87, plays 21 games, 15 goals, 10 assists, 25 points. Again, you'll notice the asterisk because he leads the league in scoring in the playoffs. Goals only. Uh, 88 plays 19 games, 14 goals, 17 assists, 31 points. And the question that was being asked of the Oilers once 88 rolled around and they won another Stanley Cup was, was this the greatest team of all time? 
and there were comparisons of them with the the 1970s Montreal Canadiens and Canadiens teams that have preceded them as well. Um, certain Toronto Maple Leafs dynasties as well. Greatest team of all time. Which one is it? You can make the argument that Stanley Cup winners with the Oilers, pretty darn good. Um, and then in 89, he did not lead the league in goal scoring that year, but they win the Cup again. Or 90, I should say. Not 89. 90. Sorry about that. Like 89, they didn't win the Cup. The Flames won the Cup in 89. 90, taking, a, taking the only Cup away from the Flames, huh? Uh, 90, 22 games played, 10 goals, 15 assists, 25 points. So still, pretty solid numbers in Stanley Cup wins. And of course, he went to the final again in 93. Had 17 points in 24 games that year. And overall, great playoff performer. Well-known goal scorer. But if this was current modern day, if if this was the era that we're experiencing right now and Gretzky and Curry were playing together, we would certainly hear a lot of comments about, yeah, Curry's pretty good, but it's because of Gretzky. Yeah, first team all-star, but a lot of that has to do with 99. So I just, I thought this is kind of notable because we do make that comment a lot about, yeah, this guy gets a lot of points, but it's really because of his line mate. It's not really, and so there's sort of a diminishing of what that player has done. And back then we, we knew how good Curry was, but again, that argument could have been made. Was it Curry or was it Gretzky? And we didn't find out until Gretzky gets traded to LA that, yeah, Curry's pretty good on his own and likely would have scored a lot of goals on his own, but... Without those Stanley Cups, without playing with Gretzky, would he have been a Hall of Famer? Probably. Would he have been in the top 100 of all-time NHL players? Probably. But that's where the debate comes into. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. As always, don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. And hey, thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I'll talk to you again soon.